Hi, my name is Paddy Hirsch. I'm a senior editor at Marketplace. Today I want to talk about cap and trade. The reason? Because we're seeing a lot of effort by the government to try and solve our pollution problems and our carbon emission problems through cap and trade. And there's some legislation on Capitol Hill this week. So, let's see how it works. Cap and trade. What is it? Or perhaps I should ask, who is it? Because cap and trade is a very real person. Here he is, the good old captain returned from many years at sea with the Royal Navy. While he was away, the captain would come back every couple of years. As a result, he's got four good, good sons, all right? Here's number one. Son number one is Pompey. Here he is, big lad, great rugby player. Number two is Bickley. Okay, here he is. And uh, next we have Norton. Good lad. And finally, little boy, Guz. Okay, now, in order to feed this family of four that he has, uh, Captain Trade comes up with a very interesting uh, little plan for the Navy. He says to the Navy, instead of you giving me a pension, why don't you give me some of your surplus pies? Because the Navy like pies, and every, every day they produce you know, more than 100 in surplus. So uh, Captain Trade says to him, give me those 100 pies a day. What I'll do is I'll sell them in my new pie shop. Here it is. This new pie shop. The Navy says, OK, that sounds like a good idea. We don't have to give you any money, plus we can get rid of these surplus pies. So here, every day, the Navy truck rocks up with 100 pies on board. It is the Royal Navy. And uh, ready for Captain Trey to sell. And he and the four boys get together and they sell these 100 pies. The problem is, these four lads have got quite an appetite. And as they get older, the appetite gets bigger, as it does with young boys. And uh, it turns out that they start eating good old Captain Trade at a house and home. In fact, they eat more than 50% of the pies, which doesn't give him enough margin, you know, to be able to do things like pay the rent and the electricity bill and all the rest of it. The other thing that it's doing is it's making the boys just a little bit tubby because they're not getting enough exercise. So now Captain Trade, he looks at it and he assesses and he says, I've got two problems here. The first thing is these boys are eating too many pies overall. It's cutting into my margin. They're consuming too much of the resource, which is the pies. The second thing that they're doing is they're over-consuming themselves. And they're, doing them, they're giving themselves a problem. Okay? They're making themselves fat. So what I need to do is I need to reduce the overall consumption. And I also need to get these guys to eat fewer pies so they can slim themselves up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cap on it. Okay? So he puts a cap on the pies that these boys can eat. The most that Pompey can eat, he's the biggest, is 10. The most that Bickley can eat is 8. The most that, most that Norton can eat is 6. The most that Guz can eat is 4. So how many is that? Gives us 28 pies. Okay, so that is the cap, it's 28 pies, 28% of the overall amount of pies that, uh, that actually go into the shop at, at, at any point each day. So now you can start to see the incentives for the lads, okay, because they're not allowed to eat any more than these 28 pies. So say Bickley's hungry and he wants to eat 10 pies as opposed to 8, he can't do it because there's only 28 pies in the mix. But now Pomp Eggers sees an opportunity because Pop Bickley wants two extra pies, He's got four. He says to himself, well, if I eat fewer pies, then I can sell him two pies. So he looks in the mirror and he says, you know, I could do with a couple of less pies a day. I'm going to cut my consumption in half, down to two. So now he's got two pies for himself that he can trade, and he can sell them to Bickley for whatever price he likes, or whatever price they can, uh, they can work out between them. All right? So clearly there's an incentive in eating fewer pies because it gives you pies to sell. So not only are you consuming less, you're actually making money on the deal because you're able to sell your pies on to, uh, to somebody who wants them. And this, the same thing works in industry. Like say, for example, we, talk, uh, we, have, a, uh, say we have a cement industry, we have a, an oil business, we have, a, um, we have a steel company, and we have a bike business, all right? bicycle company. All right? These different uh, industries are allowed by the government to pollute a certain amount, say, uh, 10,000 tons of carbon, 8,000 tons of carbon, 6,000 tons of carbon, 4,000 tons of carbon. The government, when it puts caps on, caps you at the, at the amount that you are able to pollute. And as an overall cap, in terms of the entire industry in the United States, of, of, of how much pollutants they can pump into the atmosphere. So say our cement, or say take our oil company. Our oil company um, is only allowed to, to produce 80,000 tons of carbon, say, but it needs to produce 100,000 tons because it's polluting too much and it hasn't, got the, hasn't been able to invest in cleaner industry for whatever reason. So it's going out into the market and saying, oh, I, I need, I need 20,000 tons, who can sell it to me? Well, this bike manufacturer 
buy some, uh, can do a number of things, can cut capacity, for example, or puts capacity on and only in certain times of the day, or uses different materials, or invests in different types of, uh, types of infrastructure, and is only polluting 20,000 tons, as opposed to the 40 that he's allowed. So he takes that extra 20,000 tons, and he can sell it to the oil company. All right? So that's the way that the cap and trade system works. So the cap goes on, and then anything you, pol you pollute below that cap, you can actually trade those, they're called emissions credits, you can trade those, uh, those credits, that, that tonnage, in the marketplace. So once cap and trade has done this, say, say we talk about cap and trade himself where the boys are eating the pies. Once he's got them all down to this level, and they, they all see the... Uh, the the, uh, the merit in actually reducing their, uh, their consumption, so he gets them down to eat. So he gets these, Pompey goes down to eating eight pies, uh, Bickley's down to eating six, uh, Norton's down to eating four, and, uh, and Gus gets down to eating two, well, that's only 20 pies, okay? And what cap and trade is now able to do is he's now able to say, let's have a new cap, these are your new caps, all right? You're not allowed to, to eat any more than these. And what it does is it slowly drives down the amount of consumption. And in industry, the idea is that it slowly drives down the amounts that uh, the polluters are putting into the atmosphere. It's good news for everybody. It's good news for people who breathe the air, obviously, because there's less pollutants going in there. It's good news for industry themselves, because the more that they invest in these new technologies that pollute less, it gives them more flexibility within the trading system themselves. Of course, if you don't do this, if you just allow people to pollute as much as they want to, it's bad news for everybody. It means that you know, there's no limit on how much pollution, say, a cement or an oil or a steel factory can put into the atmosphere. It means that you know, the air will be filled with, with dust and filth. There's going to be no, uh, no caps or no um, prevention put on any companies like that. Leaves everybody breathing bad air, leaves everybody pretty sick, and everybody, frankly, badly needing a drink. <laughs>